Hey, hey, so one of the things I've been talking about for many years now is how important PHP is in the development world. Now, a lot of people have been proclaiming PHP's death for years. And in fact, I used to get into, um, I don't know, this is pre-Twitter, uh, you know, or in the 2000s, mid-2000s and so on. I would talk about how PHP wasn't going anywhere for a whole bunch of technical reasons I won't get into. Now, despite what people thought... There is this um, opinion that I think is diminishing. Oh, there is this false negative opinion about PHP put out there by young nerdlings simply because they have this impression of what PHP used to be from the 1990s. Now, modern PHP is every bit as capable as any of the other top languages, and in certain circumstances, it's better. It depends on what you're doing. There's no one language that's particularly better than the other overall. Uh, and there's no any there's no particular language that's in the you know in the top in the top ten or twenty that are particularly bad in anything in particular except for maybe Ruby. That being said, um, what I want to do is uh, bring your attention to an article that was just published recently on uh, Ars Technica, brought to you by. And I forget the dude's name, but somebody in the audience, and you can. Put your comment under this video if you want to take uh, credit for bringing this to my attention. So Ars Technica, they said, all right, uh, PHP maintains an enormous lead in server-side programming languages. Oh, my God. Don't say it's true. But it is true. So let me scroll down the little chart here. This, this article was published in uh, September 13, 2021. So you look at this little chart. Look at all these squiggly lines at the bottom here. You got the blue and the yellow and the pink and the red. You got the red one here. What's the red? Red is ASP.NET. But it looks way up. Let's look way up. And we have this green line. What the green line is, of course, is PHP. So let's read a little bit here. Uh, one thing I'm going to point out here. Uh, Ruby is the only server-side web language that experienced much growth over the last decade and the closest remaining threat to PHP despite having a, only a 6.5% uh, of a presence. Despite having only 6.5% of a presence. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know. Ruby is not a threat. Jesus Christ. All right. So let me just look at this here. So Ruby is blue. ASP is red. .NET is red. PHP is green. So here's ASP up here. Yeah, yeah, Ruby looks like a real threat to uh, PHP. So you see, uh, since uh, 2010, uh, Ruby, PHP rather, has gone up, and it hit 80%. It's very stable around 80%. There's a little slight decline here. And you see Ruby, um, actually, interestingly enough, <clears throat> when people were trashing Ruby... I don't know who, but when people are trashing Ruby, and you see uh, from January 2018, it's gone up. It's gone up slowly but steady. It's gone up from practically nothing to next to nothing. Well, 6.5% is nothing. It's pretty good. ASP.NET is still far more popular. So let's get into the article and see what they have to say. The venerable web programming language, PHP, is a source of frequent complaints and frustrations. But according to a report... To report for W3 Tech's release today, it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. I find personally, and it's just anecdotal, I find personally people who complain about PHP don't actually write PHP. Uh, whereas uh, all these people up here using PHP code, they seem to be still using it. Anyhow, that being said, nothing's perfect. The W3 Tech's web server survey looks at four technologies use by use by site. So they're looking for technologies used by site. In Alexa's top 10 million list, today's report includes year-on-year -year chart beginning with January 2010, running all the way through to 2021. So it's a pretty good survey. The survey only includes top sites not out of elitism, but as one part of its efforts to avoid data skewing returns from domain parking services and spammers, which would otherwise dominate legitimate websites through sheer volume. So let's continue. Within that data set, the story told is clear. Apart from PHP, which held 72.5% share in 2010 and now holds 
uh, 78.9% share as, as of today. Only one server-side language ever broke 10% share. Only one other, rather, and that was uh, ASP.NET, of course, which held an impressive 24% share in 2010, but was down to 93.3% in January and 8.3% this month. So ASP.NET, if we go back to that chart, is actually in quite a decline. That's a pretty decent decline, whereas PHP is just kind of steady eddy. You know, in all fairness, uh, PHP is way up because of WordPress and other content management systems. WordPress probably being, well, not probably, is the main reason. It still doesn't take away from the fact that PHP is still widely used. Um, and I think, see, I think WordPress, in terms of being a, a sales platform and a uh, content management system, I still think it's by far king, as far as I understand. You cannot count out these technologies. I know WordPress is far from sexy, trust me. I'm the first to go, but I still use it. And I know PHP has been very unsexy because, yeah, I remember when I first learned to, to write PHP code, and at the time I was a very active Java programmer, and a freelance client basically forced me to, to write in PHP since they had an infrastructure already invested in PHP. So they didn't want me to start writing all kinds of Java code, so then they would have Java code here, and then PHP code here, and whatever. That's, that's, that's no good. That's a recipe for disaster if you own a business. So that gives you guys an important rule, by the way. If a company uh, has their investment in their technology stack in a particular language or a particular stack, they're ASP.NET oriented, they're Java oriented, they're Python oriented, they're PHP oriented, etc., they will not want to move off of that because it was just it's just a bad move technically. And it's a bad move uh, business-wise. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the PHP job market. Given how dominant it is, even though it's a lot of WordPress and content management systems, this is going to make sure, uh, this is going to ensure, rather, that PHP is not going anywhere. Oh, let me show you that chart. Look at this chart here, right? Well, oh my God. PHP is not going anywhere. So let us continue. Um, let's see. Amongst the small fry, the only truly impressive growth to be seen is in Ruby, which at 5.2% this month is still seeing continued uninterrupted growth in the W3 tech survey. This might come as a shock if you're mostly familiar with Ruby on Rails, which itself remains viable but seems to be on the decline in popularity. So I guess other Ruby-based implementations are coming up. Anyhow, there doesn't appear to be any clear contender for PHP to worry about in W3 text results. Either the inexorable mm. decline of ASP.NET over the years hasn't produced a significant boost in, in either PHP or any other single language. Uh, in all likelihood, likelihood, most of the dis disappearing ASP.NET sites already include some PHP, which would have resulted in a single site being counted twice in the W3 text results while having little or no impact on the other languages as ASP.NET service, services quietly deprecate. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens. It's, um, yeah, Microsoft's strategy uh, over the years, uh, I'm not, since the new guy came in charge, the new uh, Microsoft CEO came about, their strategy has been to provide tools for developers, and they become um, language agnostic. They say, well, whatever you want to code it. You want to code Python? Go for it. You want to go to JavaScript? Go for it. You want to do C Sharp? Go for it. One of the things I tr hold on. One of the things I try to do in this channel is try to elevate everybody's game to start thinking like an advanced developer, not like a noob. Advanced developers. They have their favorite languages and their favorite libraries and their favorite fa frameworks. That's true. But they also know that the job really affects which you're going to use. Anyhow, once again, I want to dispel that myth now, just to show you that I am very biased with regards to that. If we go back to uh, my site, the Venerable Killer PHP, so I did a little search on Ruby, and I started writing articles back, way back in 2006. Will Ruby kill PHP? So let's click through. And uh, anyway, so let me just read the first paragraph and I'll give you a little context here. With the recent 
rise in popularity of the Ruby programming language, largely driven by the excellent but not perfect web framework called Rails, I've noticed a little fear in the air, fear on the part of some people in the PHP community. So will PHP, Ruby kill PHP? The short answer is no. Anyway, so um, back in those days, you have to understand a lot of people thought that Ruby was going to take over and destroy everybody else. So then I wrote that in 2006 and 2008. I continued. I was consistent, consistent in my attacking of Ruby. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, Ruby on Rails, a paper dragon. Uh, anyway, I was going to start off as, with some... Uh, let me try again. I was going to start off this off... Whoa, let me try one more time. I was going to start this off with some analogy on how Ruby is like dating some hottie that turns out to be crazy, but I just couldn't make it work. Anyway, I don't know where I came from. Anyway, so... Um, I get into it. You don't have to read this because it's going back many years, but I want to show you guys that I have been consistent in my feeling vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Ruby PHP. Why did I talk about Ruby and PHP in these pieces? Because at the time, Ruby PHP scripting languages, PHP was very, very big in uh, the scripting game for small website development. Ruby was coming up. And a lot of PHP people thought it was competition. Um, Anyway, I argued in several articles going back. I said, no, 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 PHP is never going to go away. Don't worry about it. I was right. Um, yeah. So there you have it. That's the story. Is this a Ruby Bash video? No, not really. It's just a reality. Well, I'll give you the takeaway from this particular video. So number one, number one, when you have a technology that's so dominant, as you see with PHP here, that means there's going to be a lot of jobs, no matter what, right? Also, number two, PHP has been around for decades now. It has actually risen in popularity up until 2014, but it's pretty much held the 80% share, plus or minus 1% or 2%. And uh, there's a reason why it maintains that level, because it works. Right? If it was a disaster, it, it would not uh, hold this position. It would not hold this position. Um, so that's number two. Uh, number three, uh, what you call it... Um, what we see here in these top languages, based on what's being used in the actual web, you see, uh, you see, it's PHP, Ruby, Java, Scala, Scala. That's weird. Uh, JavaScript, static files. That's just you know non-dynamic sites. Python, Cold Fusion, Perl. These are all really, really old technologies. So, when you're looking at technologies, when you're concerned about, ooh, is something dated or not, you have to be less concerned about programming languages in that regard. So, because if you look at, I've showed all kinds of different lists and surveys, the top 10 languages are always the same group. PHP, C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, uh, SQL, it's, SQL is not a programming language, but you know, HTML, CSS, these languages, the usual cast of characters in the top 10, they've been around for decades and they're not going anywhere. In fact, Python, which is, I think it's three decades old now, it's actually risen quite a bit in popularity. So uh, when you're looking at learning programming languages, you know, any of the top 10 are good. When you're learning these languages, um, even though they're quite old, they're still the dominant players today. So you don't have to be so sensitive about, oh, is this language new or not? In fact, I would argue that these languages are so entrenched, they're not going to be replaced by anything, really. You see a little nibbling on the uh, fringes with TypeScript or something like that. But the point of the fact of the matter is that though these languages are not perfect, especially Ruby, um, they, they still are good enough to get the job done and oftentimes very good at what they're doing. So it's, they're not going to be replaced. It's a kind of a lesson of uh, software development. What you have to pay attention to, though, are the frameworks. The frameworks will come and go much more uh, often than um, the languages themselves, frameworks and libraries. So, for example, at one point in time, jQuery was huge. Of course, I just did a video where I was showing how jQuery is still in high demand. So there's, there's two worlds oftentimes. The world of the developers, the YouTube developer world, uh, where they live in their YouTube developer bubble world. And then you have the actual jobs, the actual 
technology that people are actually implementing on real sites and real businesses. And though jQuery is not something I would run out and learn, you know, so I call that a need to nerd technology, it's still widely used. And according to this Upwork survey that I just uh, talked about in a previous video, a lot of people are using it. Um, all right, that's it for now. So there you go. PHP is still king. <laughs> all right, we'll do some thumbnails. Let's get the mic out. <laughs>